It's 139 days to the 2019 general election and the stakes are getting high over individuals that will get their party tickets to contest various elective positions. While the ruling All Progressives Congress is dealing with the fallout of its decision to adopt direct primaries in selected flag bearers, the People's Democratic Party is faced with Ado's task of pruning down the gladiators vying for its presidential ticket. Good afternoon and welcome to another exciting episode of Standpoint. I am Nifemi Okuntoye. With me in the studio is a lawyer and political analyst, Libras Ashoma. Thank you for coming on the show today. My pleasure. Thank Let's you. begin with um, some of the latest developments ahead of the 2019 election. Uh, some would say that what we see play out these days is reminiscent of what transpired in 2014, especially the wave and gale of defection. Uh, we've seen the Senate president as well as Speaker of the House, you know, change party. But then national chairman of the APC was quoted to have said he wasn't even going to lose sleep. Some say that um, that perhaps almost cost the party the Oshun State governorship election, where a DOT, for instance, if his grievance had been handled better, the over 40,000 votes he had would have conveniently helped the party to win at the first ballot. What exactly are the parties learning now with this, you know, repeated development? Um, thank you for this opportunity. And then, uh, but for me, um, the political parties have learned nothing um, detto the Nigerian people. And, and so um, it's a, the same vicious circle the same pattern, the same system, and you know, um, what we saw play out from, from 1999, you know, the moment um, the politicians, you know, take a particular step, and that step is corrected, you know, by amendment to the provisions of the law, they find a way to circumvent that same process. And rather than the people insisting on you know the law being sacrosanct and applied above board, we see ourselves divided mm -hmm. along party lines and sentiment, and you know the politicians are happy, but we, we forget that they are really not quarrelling, and they tell you to your face that in politics mm. there are no permanent enemies, you know or permanent friends. All you have is permanent interest. It's just like um, um, football. Today you are in this club, you play your heart out, you know, it's almost as if, you know, you won't leave that club. And then the next day you move to the next club, you're scoring against your former club. Mm. That's the way our politicians see politics here, unfortunately. And that's why, even though the law is very clear on what should, on defection and what should happen, because we tell people the law is what the court says it is. Mm. And, and so, the issue of defection as regards lawmakers have been settled. But our failure to apply the law strictly, mm. it's what is leading to all of this. And, and so, and that's why you will always have this defection. Even in, in Sena society where democracy is practiced, if you allow the people the latitude, they will want to defect. But because the law, you know, is so sacrosanct, sacrosanct and nobody looks at your face, the moment it happens, the instrumentality of the law is activated, mm. you know, to deal with that particular st situation. And that's why you see people will remain where they are and then, you know, grow along a particular trend or ideology. And that even now, you, you, for uh, political watchers, it's difficult to actually differentiate between the Republican ideology and the Democratic ideology in America. But they are still, you know, very thin lines. But here, that's why we say there are no ideology. A man is in APC this morning, the moment his personal wishes are not satisfied and met, he leaves, he moves to PDP. And then the next day he's back to APC or he goes to labor or to YPP, as the case may be. And then you see us, you know, clapping for him. And so, for me, it is not about the political parties handling the issues with sentiments, like Oshomo, let's say, I won't lose sleep. No, that shouldn't be. 
It shouldn't be about you losing sleep. What is the position of the law? How can we use the law to checkmate this issue so that we'll be able to set a precedent? You know, some have said that. But it's too late mm. in the day mm. as we approach the 2019 election. What we have come to accept now is that That's right. anybody can defect. Don't be surprised if the president wake up tomorrow and say he's defecting to PDP or to any other party. And you see people who clap for him and say, you know, you're good to go. Most of these defections are born out of, um, you know, misunderstanding or perhaps um, what they have termed undemocratic way no. with which candidates emerge from their parties. No. Uh, uh, look at, for instance, um, the huge numbers of aspirants in Zamfara State, there are about 26 of them. And it's, it's just almost the same across across board. It now brings us to the question of which exactly is the most democratic way to have um, candidates emerge from their parties? Yeah, um, the first thing needs to, you, you, they say when trees falls on trees, first the topmost are removed, um, according to Olaru to me, in um, The Gods Are Not to Blame. Mm. And, and so, in political electioneering and party internal politics, trees are falling on trees. And so, you need to remove the topmost first. What are the topmost? What you need to have a register. Okay. INEC can conduct election without a register. Mm. And so the best way for political parties to handle you know, issues like this would be, you know, even the indirect primaries that you're talking about, if the processes for electing delegates is transparent enough, then it's like you know, um, universal adult suffrage. And uh, the challenge you, you now know? is... So, but mm -hmm. because there is no register of members, as I speak to you now, during the political registry, political party registration in my village, in Anegbete, both parties registered members who didn't even know that they were registered in both. both. I won't be surprised if you find my name in, in you know, both <laughs> parties in my community because what was, what was happening was because they needed to show up numbers just to give the impression that, yes, we, we have, have the numbers. And so if you have any of your photograph back home, they just trim it, put your name on the register, and somebody turn prints for you. And so that was what, you know, they were doing. And so if you have a register that is faulty, how do you now determine, you know, elections, even whether direct or indirect primaries? That's where the problem is. But the umpire, INEC, has also participated in all of these um, Because the provision of the law is that INEC's role is just to observe. Hmm. So INEC comes, observe. Even if the process is flawed, INEC can do nothing. Unlike before when INEC could say that this process you know, wasn't transparent enough and so they weren't going to recognize it. But the Supreme Court you know, overruled that in Musa and INEC to say, no, you cannot, you don't have such powers. Yours is, is it not affairs of the, so, of the party. And so anybody that's aggrieved, you know, have the opportunity of approaching the court. And that's why you find out that some lawmakers would have end salaries for three years and then the Supreme Court would say, look, you were not qualified in the first place to have, you, you know, own that ticket, and That's so right. you should vacate that seat and you know, refund every salary you have earned. Mm. So rather than wait for all of those usurpations, why don't we, by the law has made clear provisions for all of these you know, scenarios, but because in Nigeria we would, would rather observe the law in breach, and then once we get to the top, once we you, you know, get what we want, we believe that the law had been fulfilled. But that's not it. And that's why I tell people, the precedent we set today, we always turn around to hunt us. And so if today you have, remember those days you had the PDP, the ruling party, and they did it the way they like. It was, it will happen, and then before you talk, they will say it's a family affair. And people were yearning for a change. And APC came, and they're doing it the same way. If you talk, they'll tell you, well, you know, PDP did it the same way anyway. And, and so what's your, what's, your, what's your grievance? I would have expected, now that they're talking about internal democracy in the political parties, I would have expected that the first thing should be the political party register. The register of members of the political parties. That's where you start from. You know, Liberals, for the first time in a long time, um, APC is now going to conduct direct primaries in about 19 states. Are you saying that if this issue of register is not fixed, then it won't be as democratic as it's been widely you know, publicized. You remember, you, we, we, we learn nothing. 
You remember, it was in this same Nigeria, INEC will come with a register. You have names of Mike Tyson, Michael Jackson, uh, Van der Holyfield on INEC register. Okay. INEC had to do something to correct those anomalies. And with those kind of register, all you needed was just a register with names. People will turn print. I provided the number is not more than the number on the names on the register. So how do you verify that Nifemi is the same person that is thumbprinting? Hmm. So INEC needed to do something. INEC had taken, you know, the... INEC had elevated hmm. the process. So I expect the political parties to take it from the level that INEC, so you know, you left it now. You expect to see so, them use card readers as well so for their own now, elections? So now you're talking about party primaries or direct primaries. Who are the voters? The members, of course. How do you determine who is a member? Uh, the card-carrying members of the party. Who is a card-carrying member? Even, even at congresses, how do they determine what congress members? Somebody is given cards and it distributes to members. Mm. In other climes, political parties go on membership drive. And so you have a database of members. You, have, you can off it, say, in this local government, this is the number of registered members that we have. And so, when you're preparing for a primary, you're preparing for so and so number of mem uh, 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 members that will come to vote. I but understand, in this case, Liberals, that there's a provision in law that requires that the register is made public before primary election. For, Are you saying that that is not the case now? For political parties. For INEC, parties. INEC will make the register public mm -hmm. for claims and objection. That's right. But for the political parties, all these political parties that are talking about direct primaries, direct, have you seen any of their register? <laughs> to say, okay, these are even the names that are coming to. So for all you know, people can, they can bring people from Ogu to Lagos to vote in a direct primary for a political party. But given... Because given, at the end of the day, what determines mm. that primary is that, oh, like, yes, ballot papers were completed. Upon. I get you. Given the same circumstances, are you saying that indirect primary is better in a no. situation where you already know who the delegates are and no, they are duly elected? No, no, no. What I said is, even, I said, if, you're, if you have, if you get the processes correctly... That's right. Whether direct or indirect, the, at the end of the day, you will still produce, you know, a transparent result. Mm. It's not about whether it's direct or indirect. It's about getting the processes. First and foremost, if you have a register that, like what INEC had done now, INEC need preparing for so and so number of Mem uh, 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 members that will come to vote. I but understand, in this case, Liberals, that there's a provision in law that requires that the register is made public before primary election. For, Are you saying that that is not the for case political now? Parties, for political parties, INEC will make the register public mm -hmm. for claims and objection. That's right. But for the political parties, all these political parties that are talking about direct primaries, direct, have you seen any of their register? <laughs> to say, okay, these are even the names that are coming to. So, for all you know, people can, they can bring people from Ogu to Lagos to vote in a direct primary for a political party. But given... Because given, at the end of the day, what determines mm, that primary is that, oh, like, yes, ballot papers were turned printed upon. I get you. Given the same circumstances, are you saying that indirect primary is better in a no. situation where you already know who the delegates are and they no, are duly elected? No, no, no. What I said is, even, I said, if, you're, if you have, if you get the processes correctly, That's right. whether direct or indirect, the, at the end of the day, you will still produce, you know, a transparent result. Mm. It's not about whether it's direct or indirect. It's about getting the processes. First and foremost, if you have a register that, like what INEC had done now, INEC knew that from the word go, from 1999 until 2014, where they started cleaning up the register, that the register they had was faulty. That is even at the INEC level. Not talk of political parties. And so what did they do? 
when they mooted the idea of having a transparent process, they knew that the first step to achieving a transparent process is having a register that you can't fault. Mm. And so they also, also knew that with technology, you'll be able to eliminate fraud, which was why they came up with card readers, to say, let's even use a, a technology, a device to identify members. So when we are registered, we are registered, and you know what INEC would do after registration? Because your biometrics, your facials have been catch, captured, INEC will still run the process through what they call an automated fingerprint identification system to, to eliminate sure multiple thumb printing. You're right. And then also to be able to match your biometrics with your facials and all of that. You know, these are processes. And yet, with all of that, you still hear people want to clone card reader. That's why um, I, I disagree with somebody's you know, yesterday at a different forum when he said, oh, there are rumors that people are selling or buying card, uh, voter's card. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, even if you buy it, you can't use it. Yeah, but the idea is so, to disseminate, to decimate the other party. If, for instance, you can tell where the other candidate is strong, you can withdraw the PVCs and how, then how do you determine, affect one way or the other. How do you determine that those people will truly vote for that no, candidate? No, there are strongholds are, where, there are strongholds are where candidate, particular candidates what if, are popular. What if, those, if you are popular and mm. somebody is ready to sell his PVC in your stronghold where you're popular and your supporters are selling their PVC, it means that they were never with you. Let's bring this, so, um, just a quick, minute, quickly. Liberals, let's bring this to Lagos very quickly uh, so that we can put all of this in the right perspective. The battle for governorship and uh, senatorial seats in Lagos uh, is in top gear, no doubt, as uh, politicians and political gladiators flex muscles to outdo one another as well as getting the APC's ticket in the governorship and senatorial primaries scheduled for September the 30th and October the 2nd, respectively. The contest has pitched power brokers in Lagos against one another. And um, one of the questions we're asking is, why, why do politicians get scared of direct primaries? <laughs> you know, they know. If, if it's about, like I, I told you, if it's about a transparent process where you know that, yes, you know your members, mm -hmm. you have a register that, you know, to at least a very large extent, you can say this is a register of members, and on that day, these are the members that will determine the outcome. You won't be scared, mm -hmm. whether direct or indirect. Okay. But when you cannot even identify the people that are going to vote on that day, and you're not in the good books of the Godfathers, Definitely, you have every reason to be scared. Are your chances different if it's in an, an indirect um, primary? If, if it's, it's not different, your chances are not different. But it's just that you might be able to influence you know, the delegates because they are fewer. The other way to and look at it is that and, and some and people will say that in an indirect primary, uh, there is um, perhaps little money to, you, you no, can no, identify no. those to say to- To some extent, yes. To vote but, in your favor. Yes, but, the, yes, but also, in that indirect primaries, if you have delegates, then you'll be able to know who to, who to... But when you don't even have delegates and you're a candidate, you don't know who the delegates are. The delegates, you know, the, the allegiance of the delegates, you know, it's, you know, towards a particular direction. Even if with all the money that you have, there's little or nothing you can do. Based on what you're saying and, now, it appears to me that both direct and indirect are consensus, as the case may be. It's almost the same thing. It's this, that's what I'm telling you. It's the same thing, but... The issue should be that if we truly want to discuss internal Let me hold you for a minute to take this call from Abia State. We have Okoria for from Abia. Good afternoon and welcome to Standpoint. Mazi. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Liberos. Mazi, how is our movie this morning? Our <laughs> movie is cool and funky. Our boys are doing everybody is there gradually, gradually. <laughs> Great. Please go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, you see Political parties should start operating directly from the world level with a standard register. With names of registered members, this will help them during all this our uh, election of uh, the election of officers. As not like what is going on. This the issue of this issue of class program of indirect or direct election will no longer be a problem, like what Mr. Liberals was just saying. You see, 
There is a standard register which they are supposed to go. If with this season register, it will just do help them. When the members in any world start paying their money, their dues monthly or quarterly, it will help them. At least they will have fun. And with that very fun, now, anybody within them, among them by which they know is a competent hand can comfortably do what? Transfer to that person without that person to, for a way to look for money or to come and invest so that at the end of the way, he or she enters the office and starts uh, recruiting. Today, one can talk from one particular party and enter another particular party to go and contest. If they thought so that's what is going to go on, but we see some people today, they will join between this party today, campaign and win. When they see that it's not forever, they will jump out to another political party because there's no register that what Mr. Liberals will just say. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day in Lagos. Thank you for your comments, Okori Raphael. What exactly is the implication of all of these on democracy? Uh, for instance, you know, prior to this time, it is easy for a sitting governor. I mean, it's more like, like a rubber stamp. You get your way back. But that's the when, situation is different when, now. That's when you don't have a godfather to report to. Is this when process deepening democracy, no, so let, to speak? Let, let's not deceive ourselves. We have never deepened anything. You know, we just we just walk around. You know, the the uh, hallows of democracy, and the then the idea now is pretend. that someone else, someone else who has a dream, who has a vision, can also come out and say, "Well, let us have a yeah. primary election." Look, 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 Nifemi. Let's not delude ourselves. The question is very simple. I can't just rise now and go join political party, and then some day say. I want to contest for an elective office in that political party if the powers that be in that party, no matter how popular I think I am. But if you have a register that you know, members can be identified, and so I will not need to pander too much towards the whims and caprices of some godfather. How can we get I, this standard register that you're talking what, about? Mm. How did we get our next standard register? Okay. It's the process is simple. Will it require Ma some Ma sort Ma of Kura legislation? Just said something mm. from not litigation. It's the legislation, same. right? No, mm. no, you don't need it. Mm. What? While we are talking to our politicians, if we must do the right thing, let's now we, with technology. INEC is talking about card readers. Why can't the same politician say, look, mm. we also want to have members? Take for example, today, tomorrow you hear, oh, the Senate president has defected with his followers. To PDP. And then you now begin to ask yourself, these followers, tomorrow you will see all of them voting in PDP delegate, delegate election. At what point did they register? How many of them registered with him when he defected? Let's go to Niger State where Steve is standing by. Good afternoon, Steve. Welcome to Standpoint. the volume of your TV so we can do away with the feedback distortion. Interestingly, uh, we just got news that um, Dr. Femi Hamzat has stepped down for Babaji De Sonwolu in the forthcoming primary election in Lagos. Are you surprised? What does this, you know, propose? Are you surprised? For what, the what, that, look, look, let me tell you. And that's why, for me, that's why you politicians... You don't see them, you never hear of them until a few months to election. They suddenly wake up and then, you know, I want to be governor. I want to be president. If you have a process, a transparent process for even nominating candidates, I tell you, the moment elections are over, mm -hmm. people that would want to contest for elective office in the next four years will start work immediately by identifying with the people, by also promoting their plans and programs, even in the minutest way they can. But because all at the end of the day, it is a few people that will determine the fate. And so you can just sit down somewhere and you'll be called to come and go. What does and, this, and that's why. What does this new development means for the chances of Governor Akimbode, I mean, Ak Akimumi Ambode? Look, for me, this is my personal opinion. Akimumi Ambode, because of the precedent that has been set in Lagos, I would have loved that he continues, let him finish his eight years. That's my personal opinion. But from the, we can't shy away from the feelers that we get, that um, 
oh, the, the power brokers in Lagos do not want him to continue. And that is why, that's why you hear that um, uh, Sonwolu is giving him a, a, a fight. Hamza also, Abzat also had come out before. In 2003, the AC, AC uh, primaries, Tinubu then was the governor of Lagos State and he was running for a second term. We didn't hear that, you know, some other persons, you know, the only uh, uh, places where you had problems with the primaries was in PDP. APC was settled because you had a governor, you know, he was in the saddle. And so the, always, the governor will always have a right of first refusal. In 2011, the turn of Fashola, even though we also heard that there were skirmishes and there were problems, but at the end of the day, can you remember anybody running against Fashola at the primaries mm. in, in, in ACN? You know, and so, because... That's what I'm saying that for... I'm finding Hard to understand why you're not seeing any democratic dividends in this development. It is not, there is no democracy in it. Let us look at if the issues for instance. Democracy, mm. If it was about democracy, and what's democracy? Government of the people, for the people. Let's remove the evil for the people now, by the people. And, and so then you would say, head or tail. And so in this case, the, candidate now, would be, the people would, being delegates. Yes. Uh, I mean, in a direct form, yes. can say that um, we want someone else to represent us. Yes. I mean, so, is, so at that, isn't at that democratic? At, at that, at, no, no. What we have is oligarchy. What we have is oligarchy where, you know, you have the feudal lords who sit, whether in front or behind, and detect what happens. And then we pretend it's democracy. Let's take this to the United Kingdom. I understand that Olalikon is standing by. Hello, Olalikon. Welcome to Standpoint. Hello. Thank you very much. Please go ahead um, with your contribution. What I just want to say is very simple. You see, we need to start appreciate ourselves. You see, liberals have never praised the Nigerian system for once. He was in saying before that he lived in the United Kingdom before. Look, it's not everything is perfect here. So we're just talking about golf and that is or whatever whatsoever. No, that's not the case. There's anywhere in the world there's a golf and If people campaign or people use influence for other people to win political office, it's not saying golf and Even in the legal state, if you say golf and but it's working, it's workable. We have to it. That is why many people live in legal state. Can we just stop that saying of analysis? What I expect people like liberals should do is you try to uh, advise political parties to upgrade their list or to encourage them to try to do more about their register, not to just to condemn everything we have. Then here in our country, even we people we live in abroad, we still want to come back home. You know, so we well, need to know. do more. For our system to encourage, not to just condemn everything we are doing. PDP has spoiled Nigeria for 15 years, and they are still shouting, uh, leaking election in Oshu. What they have been doing for 15 years, they read, they oppress, they, they do anything. So we just try to stop. We don't, we don't need to be condemn ourselves for anything for no reason. When PDP losing, they will be calling any international community, this, that, 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 that. What they are doing for 15 years is terrible in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Olali Olalikon, so for just a minute before you contribute. Uh, you see, the issue of Godfatherism is relative in the sense that nobody just appears on the scene. Now, I mean, let us, let, us, let us discuss this a bit away from politics. The fact that even in politics, there are certain names that you didn't hear of until... This, that, 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 that. What they are doing for 15 years is terrible in Nigeria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Olalike. So Olalikon, for... Just a minute before you contribute. Uh, you see, the issue of Godfatherism is relative in the sense that nobody just appears on the scene. Now, I mean, let us, let, us, let us discuss this a bit away from politics. The fact that even in politics, there are certain names that you didn't hear of until someone you know, decided that this person uh, perhaps is also qualified for this job. Is there anything wrong in staying loyal to someone who had recommended you for a job. You see, this is where a lot of people get these issues, you know, um, confused. 
nobody is discussing PDP here. Nobody is discussing uh, uh, Oshun election. We're discussing, as we march towards 2019, what can we do to promote democracy in our system? And what are we practicing currently? Then the first step, I said, except maybe, you know, the caller is biased, and so he's probably not listening. I talked about having a register that you can truly, just like INEC. He agreed with you on that. Uh, and so, what's the disagreement here? Let's look so at So then on the issue of godfatherism, yeah. even in America, there are people who are members of political parties who can sway votes. You can't overrule their influence. They've, been, they've given so much to that political party that even members look up to them. That's right. Even in our local community, the people you identify as, as leaders. But what I am saying here is, when you discuss politics here, if you don't have a register, internal democracy, you cannot, in all, on, all honesty, say you are discussing internal democracy without a, 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 a register. I think and you so make... at the end of the day, what you're mm. going to have is those people that weigh those influences. That's right. The influence, rather than being a persuasive one, would be a compulsive one. That's the difference. In your opinion. All right, let's um, take a break here. We'll go on a short break now. The discussion continues after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Standpoint, and we're talking about issues ahead of the 2019 general election. APC's decision to adopt direct primaries for all elective positions in the state is one issue that has now caused some sort of division in the party structure. Liberals are sure my still here. Thank you for staying the course on the show. Let's look at one of the issues that have become prominent ahead of the uh, governorship primary election of the APC. If you look at the you know, the flyers of these candidates. It's um, one of them reads together, you know, we can win, united, together. And then the other candidate is saying, I'm going to listen, I will listen, and indeed really listen. What is the relevance of paying attention to the party structure? What is the relevance of um, uh, um, staying on the course, especially with the system that brought you in? Yeah. Um, uh, Relative I, to I've been, good governance. I've been, I've been trying not to, you know, personalize this discussion but i think from no we're in question, lagos now yeah yeah but from your question it will have no option but to i can't avoid it ambody and the crisis in apc whether we call it whether we agree or not there is a crisis in but it. it is not but, also just but, a minute just a minute liberals mm. because we must not deal with the lagos issue in isolation no, 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 lagos no. is only one out of about agree, 19 agree, states agree. where We're direct using, primaries are being held we are using lagos as a test case that's right you know why because in most of these other places where direct primaries are being held the governor is almost like the leader of the party in those states and so and some of the states the governor has finished two terms. And so you, you have you know, other candidates you know, jostling for that position and, and, and so. But Lagos is a very peculiar case. For Lagos, that's why I told you that in every political sphere, there are people with influences. In, um, even in our national life, there are people, there are leaders at every level. Even at my own level, I'm a leader somewhere. Okay. You know? But for somebody, for example, in 2015 or 2014, if the level, if the feed were probably level, somebody most probably won't have emerged as a candidate at that primaries. But at the end of the day, he became the candidate because of the process. And, and so to that extent, the party also had said, look, we do not, from what we, if anything, we gather from, you know, the news is true, that look, we do not, like the style 
of the governor because he doesn't listen. Who said that? That's, that's what I'm telling you. If anything, we gather no, from party because... members, from the news. Okay. Is anything to go by? I just wanted you to and, mention a name uh, to be sure that we are not um, peddling fake no, no, news no, on this no, platform. No, no, no. If we no. can't not credit no. that to anyone, no, we might I'm just not, say I'm that not is a one person, as a person, not one right person. Now. Okay. No, not one person. Mm. I also, as a Lagosian, have probably talked with party members also and people who feel, oh, look, what is really the issue? And they say, oh, look, um, we hear that. You know, the allegations that the man also does not listen to party members. And then there are Which crises. Which cannot be proven. And then there are crises. That's exactly what I want us to and then there are pay attention Remember? to liberals. Just a minute. I, I, yeah. I want us to be very careful Subjective here. opinions. Exactly. Uh -huh. there are, you need to also, make that very clear. There are also crises. Remember the um, Loma hmm. um, issue. You also remember the land you charge and all of that. You know, a lot of people also are not too happy. Coming from the level of, oh, Fashola development was communal base. But for Ambody, is a societal one, you know, big project that really do not have direct impact. You know, so, but all that said... But if what you have just he, said now, I'm sorry for interjecting you so often, if what you have said now is by any chance true, I am thinking that it's a more democratic process, such that an incumbent governor or incumbent governor uh, doesn't feel that many of the decisions he has made cannot be challenged by even his party. No, no see. Because earlier you, you mentioned you, that there is nothing democratic you, about the system. No, yes, yes, that's what I'm telling you that. The same, you, you see, it's ironical that the same way you say, oh, do, do you know before now, just before the primaries, what would have been the slogan of the party? Oh, our body is working. Lagos is progressing. And then all of a sudden, Ambody is no longer working. Lagos is no longer progressing, that you need to replace him. And that's where the big question is but for me. And say, so saying that, that also, me saying that also issue, might be preempting you know, an election that has not held. And that's why I'm saying that you dragged me to the issue. So mm -hmm. let's go deep into it. Let's not discuss it on the surface. And, and so I gave you instances with 2003 and 2011, mm. the, politi the party primaries. Mm. And, and so now that we approach approaching the party primaries also, what are the issues? Why is there a challenge right. to the candidature of you know, a governor who should ordinarily, according to the unwritten precedent set by the party, should have you know, a right of first refusal. It's all right. Let's shift focus very quickly to the PDP now uh, because of a time where more than 14 aspirants are vying for the party's presidential ticket. While some political watchers say the harvest of presidential aspirants in the PDP is a recipe for disaster, others say it's good for democracy. What's your take on this? You, you, you see, that's a, a big problem I have with politicians. Everybody believe, because we have a system of government where Nigeria is run like a local government. And so everybody now wants to be president. Hmm. Everybody, every Tom, Dick, and Harry wants to be president. And that's why now you find people who at some point had, you know, tasted that um, ambition. That's right. I want to be president. Now wanting to be governors. <laughs> You, you understand? We make a mockery of the system. I had expected, remember, you know, some years back, Balare B. Musa had advised the then opposition that he must, if you must give PDP a run for its money, this one that they are so ambitious that they have said they will rule Nigeria for 16 years, you should not, you know, begin to feed this candidate at fringe party level. There's need for synergy. Hmm. What the PDP also is doing is making a mockery of the presidential system. You know, where everybody wants to be candidate. And I tell you, because knowing politicians in Nigeria for who they are, some are, will definitely defect. If they don't get the ticket, mm. they would leave. They would jump ship because it's about them. And, and so that's why, if, if you time permits me, I begin to take all of them one after the other. That's why I still feel that in spite of the misgivings that we might have, the president that we'll have now, except, except, there is a stronger candidate, not the one that we already see now, that will give him a run for his money. His second term is almost a given. But there are some who would say that what is playing out in the PDP is even more democratic than the presidential primary of the democracy. other party yesterday. Because, for instance, now, democracy is always about the people. The people yes. Now we have 12 people contesting for a ticket. Yes. I mean, 
The other big party only has one name on it. I agree with you, but that does not make it more democratic. How the do you fact mean? that you have everybody, you know, at the end, Recently, the governor of uh, River State was threatening fire and brimstone that mm -hmm. he was going to deal with them. If they, why is he insisting that the convention must be in Rivers? Mm -hmm. If it was about democracy, anywhere the convention holds, it's about the people turn printing for a particular candidate. Why must it be in Rivers? But because it is not about democracy, it's about personal interest. How personal interest can be skewed, you know, to, to, to be seen as, you know, general interest. And, and so, when you look at all of that, and, and, and when you look at that, and you look at the candidates, and you look at their spread, you look at, you know, the antecedent and what they have done before now, you discover that it's not about, you know, democracy, it's not about engaging with the people. It's not about, you know, um, belief in the process. But it's for, about how can I? For the PDP, in the last couple of weeks, we have seen uh, most of the presidential aspirants uh, going from state to state to converse, vote, you know, to convince the delegates ahead the you know Do you know why they would do that? Unlike the APC, the ruling party, the APC, they, they have the, governor, the president at the center, and all governors, the party structures would, whether you like it or not, would naturally you know, gravitate towards the head, which is the president. And so those governors at their state will represent the president, which is the candidate now, at their state level. And so he might not necessarily need to go back to plead with them, to beg them for votes. Unlike the PDP, that you have multiple candidates, and every candidate will need to go to see the party structures at various states. And that's why you see them, you know, globetrotting. The fact Let's that wait the till after the primaries mm -hmm. okay. and then come back to this same discussion on whether this same candidate that are globetrotting and shouting PDP today will still insist that, why do you think the party is saying, mm -hmm. let's sign a peace accord uh, so that at the end of the day, whoever emerged, the other party, the other candidates will support them because they know themselves. That's what I'm saying, so, that that particular election hasn't held yet. No. Already we have had commitments from uh, quite a number of the aspirants saying that whichever way it goes, we're going to stay here and support the winner. Isn't that process credible enough? Those same, those same comments we are even made by these same people, some of them that were in APC, that jump ship. Some of them left APC to PDP because they knew that, oh, look here, I can't, my ambition, you know, it's already um, uh, still bad here because mm -hmm. already, the same way it happened in PDP in 2015, some people who felt, look, they have ambition, but because PDP said we printed only one form because that time they were, you know, government at the center. So it's the same thing that you have in APC. That's why all of them now, the PDP seems to be the alternative, you know, governors at their state will represent the president, which is the candidate now, at their state level. And so he might not necessarily need to go back to plead with them, to beg them for votes, unlike the PDP that you have multiple candidates, and every candidate will need to go to see the party structures at various states. And that's why you see them, you know, globetrotting. The fact Let's that wait the till after the primaries, mm -hmm. okay. and then come back to this same discussion on whether this same candidate that are globetrotting and shouting PDP today will still insist that, why do you think the party is saying, mm -hmm. let's sign a peace accord uh, so that at the end of the day, whoever emerged, the other party, the other candidates will support them because they know themselves. That's what I'm saying, so, that that particular election hasn't held yet. No. Already we have had commitments from uh, quite a number of the aspirants saying that whichever way it goes, we're going to stay here and support the winner. Isn't that process credible enough? Those same, those same comments were even made by these same people, some of them that were in APC, that jump ship. Some of them left APC to PDP because they knew that, oh, look here, I can't, my ambition, you know, it's already um, uh, still bad here because mm -hmm. already, the same way it happened in PDP in 2015, some people who felt, look, they have ambition, but because PDP said we printed only one form because that time they were, you know, government at the center. So it's the same thing that you have in APC. That's why all of them now, the PDP seems to be the alternative, you know, platform. Mm -hmm. And that's why all of them are moving there. So if it is about, like we talked about, the people, direct primaries or indirect primaries, talking about the register, the political party register, the same PDP don't have. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and then interfacing 
with the people. Yes, I agree. You will talk to party leaders who will be able to influence their people, talk to them, and then you engage the people directly. Let me hold but, you uh, for a bit. We have um, Ade calling in from London. Ade, welcome to the show. Please go ahead with your contribution. Yes, uh, I just want to say a few things. Uh, I'm in total support of uh, your, the, the guy in the studio. Uh, I love them, so I'm sorry, I don't know even. So I'm in total support of what he's saying. Uh, my advice is this, very, very important. If Abode is not uh, elected to contest for the second term, APC will use Lagos State. Mark my word. A new party will win the election. You see what happened in Oshun? People will vote. It will be a revenge vote because to relate a governor like that is not nice. And this is the first Christian governor in Lagos in the democracy. It, it, it means a lot to everybody in diaspora and all over the world. So they should play the game carefully. Those who are behind this will not be relevant very soon. If they don't pick that up, because another party will win and Thank you very much for that place. Thank you for your contribution, Ade. Well, we left that issue already, so yeah, I don't let, want let to quickly add, add to this. Uh, I, I would, Ambode, ordinary, like I said, if the feed were level during the primary, it probably wouldn't have been a candidate. Even if the party decides against his candidature, I will add, I would, I would wish that he continues. It's all right. But if they decide against the candidature, I will advise him to respect the party decision and not, you know, try to bite the fingers that have fed him. Let's he move on from there. Respect the party position very and show good leadership mm. that Nigeria and Nigerians who are still not too drunk with power. Let's move on from there. The prime election is scheduled for tomorrow, I believe, and then by the time that holds, we'll know exactly where the pendulum swings uh, for Lagos State. But one of the main issues that have become predominant ahead of the 2019 election, for instance, they have said that the Akiti and Osho ele elections are more or less like a litmus test for the general election. Is the role money has been playing in our politics? Uh, do you want to talk about how much some people have to pay for expression of interest and nomination form? Even in Osho State, where INEC, in collaboration with security operatives, fought vote buying at the polling units, there are still some unconfirmed, uh, uh, you know, you know, allegations you want saying it that um, money still, you know, passed hands before that particular exercise. How can this monster be defeated ahead 2019? I. People say that you must have a side job. Well, fortunately for me, I don't have a side one. The only job I have is, you know, the job of being a lawyer. And, and so it will take me back to the law. Okay. The Electoral Act has made copious provisions, you know, for how this can be dealt with. But like I say, our problem is not the law. Our problem is the implementation and applicability of the positions, provisions of our laws. Right. And, and so, and that's why INEC, to a very large extent until recently, seems helpless. Oh, this menace of vote buying, how do we help this situation? Oh, this menace of political parties spending beyond their limit, what do we do? The law has made copious provisions for what can be done from section 91, section 92, section 93 of the Electoral Act, how much each political party can spend. And do you know that even the law forbids that if your if a, if a, some exceeding hundred thousand is donated to a political party, that if the political party cannot identify the source of that money, that that fund should be rejected. Hmm. And that do you also know that by virtue of this act, that at the end of the political uh, uh, at the end of the election, political parties ought to you know, file their financial returns back to INEC, and INEC will in turn publish the account. Who then assures, I, I mean, who ensures the implementation of INEC. this within the guideline of the INEC. laws? INEC. Are you saying that INEC hasn't been doing its job? It hasn't been doing it. And, and so, when you look at all of these relevant provisions, right from 1999 to date, it's been observed more in breach. And, and so, it will be easy because now it's, you can't even track the funds. And so that's the first place you start from. Hmm. How are 
how do, uh, do political parties and candidates source for funds? I hear AFCC recently saying, you know, they are monitoring accounts of politicians to, in collaboration with INEC to ensure that, you know, vote buying is a beautiful idea. But do we just end it up with monitoring? What happens in the event of violation? That's where you start from. You know, ensure that the limits, the purpose these provisions are there, the provisions are there for a purpose. They are not to window dress. In a situation and where so, there is possibility. When it is mm. exceeded, there are penalties. I get you. Immediately, the instrumentalities of the law should be activated. And so when you, you, you can't, you can't prosecute everybody, but you should use a few. That's exactly you know where set. I'm going to because the perception is that almost all the political parties, yes, or the main all. ones, have violated this law. Everybody. In a situation where that is a reality, uh, you know, prosecuting the offence does that not entirely nullify the electoral process or the That's election that saying, has just taken when place? When you start from there, when you start from even identifying vote buying prosecuting vote by do you know even inducement in exchange for contract it's an offense by virtue of our laws is this an impossible task for it INEC? is not impossible but first and foremost like i always say we need to look at INEC and we we'll want if we want INEC to succeed it will succeed but if we don't want it to succeed it won't succeed so every and, and so mm -hmm. we produce the kind of INEC that we want that will pander towards what we want. And so you will leave it at that. Why do you think, from 1999 to 2015, when the APC were in opposition, the slogan on most of you know, the party members today who were in opposition, including some of us who were in the civil society then was, look, INEC need to be truly independent. The waste panel report, the waste panel report. Why are we no longer discussing the waste panel report? Hmm. Even the Ken Namani, fantastic. Recently, as uh, we approach the election, the Attorney General has proposed amendment to the uh, Electoral Act also to create the Electoral Offenses Commission. That's right. Beautiful, you know, but too late in the day because that, that would even be done until the next election. But I hope it will not be killed even after the, the next election. And, and so all of these are ways you can take care of some of these, you know, uh, mafisans. And... Use, you know, a few persons to set example. The low-hanging fruit, some big names, and that will serve as a deterrent. Next time you want to, you know, withdraw cash to, sh to share uh, at polling unit, you know that somebody, you know, somewhere, security agent somewhere is watching, and your account might be flagged and investi matters investigated, and that might even nullify the votes. We're wrapping but up because now. Because we don't do that for mm -hmm. both the two major parties. That's right. And if you use the two major parties as example, I tell you, even the smaller ones will shiver when next you talk about it. So most of the elections that have been held recently uh, have been contested in court, you know, whether from the tribunal and all of that. Uh, so there are some who, who would say that the ability of um, INEC to be independent during election is always been second-guessed, if not by the electorate, by the opposition party. Uh, what is the impact of this? You know, when, on the credibility of our polls. When, when the Oshun election was, this was declared inconclusive, you know, there were a lot of interpretations to it, and, you know, and I told... Bearing you know, in mind that the election itself, the process leading to the election itself, were commendable. Yeah, we're, we're, the, we're, I'm, I'm the collection there. of we're, PVCs, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're, the conduct I'm, of INEC I'm getting there. Let's take it one after the other, mm. you know. And for the first time during the conduct of that election, even observers were very impressed with INEC, and the implementation of the refusal to take phones into the polling unit was very commendable. And then when the elections were declared inconclusive, you know, a lot of interpretations went, you know, in spin doctors. But And your lawyers you know, also confused us the more. Exactly. Do you know why that was so? Because of lack of trust in our public institutions. Mm -hmm. And so I told a lot of people, I said, look, INEC has power to declare results inconclusive if, you know, A, B, C, you know, are, are in place, are observed. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people cited Section 179, Subsection 2 of the Constitution, that INEC guideline cannot overrule that. And I said, go read the case of James Faleke and INEC. Even though a lot of us disagree with the interpretation of the Supreme Court in that matter, but that is the position of the law. And so in as far as this issue is concerned, if you read that case, the Supreme Court said that 
you would you have to in reading section 179 subsection 2 you will read it in concurrence with uh, the powers of INEC to create uh, uh, guidelines in section 153 of the electoral act and then also read the guidelines it's all liberal and, and so when you take all of this mm. collectively you would be able to arrive at the decision that INEC arrived at and so as we move towards the 2019 election the only way we can win public confidence in the people is to ensure that first, public enlightenment on the provisions of the law, the provisions of the INEC guidelines, that these are, because these are the, the, the guidelines that will determine. I'm afraid know, the that conduct. we might just have to wrap it there. Uh, this conversation cannot be conclusive in one hour, you know, just like the Oshima election. Um, so we, we <laughs> <laughs> will continue some other day. Libros Oshima, thank you for uh, sharing your thoughts with us My pleasure. on issues ahead 2019 election. And that's our package on today's edition of Stanport. Thank you for watching. Remember, you can watch a repeat of this edition tomorrow by 7 a.m. I am Nifem Yukuntui. Enjoy your weekend and God bless Nigeria.